This episode is about living your best life on your terms. And the first step in that process is to stop doing the shit you hate and start embracing the life you love. You're listening to Zen Sandwich, a podcast for the independent mind and anyone who embraces life despite its absurdities. Join former attorney and professor turned Japanese papermaker Mark Reed each week as he talks with creative, inspiring, and influential people, or as he shares his own research to help make your world a little better today than it was yesterday. So what do I mean by stop doing the stuff you hate? That might seem obvious on the surface, but I mean two things here. One, stop being complacent about mediocrity and living a humdrum life that you don't love. And two, stop doing things that you don't actually like, but you do them because you like the idea of doing them. There's more on that later. Let's begin with three of my favorite examples from history. Oscar Wilde, Vincent Van Gogh, and Henry David Thoreau. The flamboyant and brilliantly witty Oscar Wilde was unapologetically himself, notorious for it. He lived a life that defied the societal norms of the Victorian era in Britain. Wilde refused to conform to the expectations of his time, and in doing so, he found a path to authenticity. You don't have to become a world-renowned writer to do this. But Oscar Wilde saw the absurdities of certain societal expectations. He had an eccentric fashion sense, probably be mild by today's standards. His writings were highly satirical, of course, and he rejected conventional morality. Now, am I suggesting you reject morality? Absolutely not. What I am suggesting is that you decide what is moral for you and not based on what I or anyone else tells you it should be. I mean, can you seek guidance and wisdom from people, from books, etc.? Of course. But you need to pick your own values and morals and live a life that you know is right. Let me put it another way. If you simply live by the rules that somebody else just tells you, and you only do it on the basis of uh, you trust that person more than yourself, for whatever reason, or you're afraid of going to hell, or you're trying to get into heaven. Well, you aren't acting moral at all. In fact, in that particular case, your intent is selfish. You're trying to get reward or escape punishment. Rather, act out of a sense of compassion, empathy, kindness. Why? Because you care. Because you care about others, and you care about the world. You see, I'm not giving you a set of rules to live by here. There's no thou shalt or thou shalt not in Zen or in this podcast. Zen is more concerned with virtues and value ethics. I'm suggesting that you're guided by your values, not a set of hard and fast rules. You believe that a world is good and kind and benevolent is better than a world that is cruel and cutthroat. So you contribute to the value of good by acting good for the sake of the whole world, not simply to save your own skin. I know that's a long way to go from starting out with Oscar Wilde, but stay with me. The point of the Oscar Wilde example is to defy convention. Decide what's right for you. Vincent Van Gogh, the troubled genius. He is another example of someone who stopped doing what he hated. He lived a life marked by poverty, mental illness, and rejection, but he never stopped pursuing his passion for art, even when society dismissed him. His dedication to his craft and his unwavering pursuit of self-expression are inspiring. He did what he truly loved rather than for the identity attached to what he was doing. In other words, he painted because he loved painting. And not because it brought him wealth or fame or because he thought he would look cool to be a painter. If you like collecting stamps or crochet and scarves and baby blankets (laughs) because you love to do it, then do it. The love of the thing 
is more important than the identity attached to the thing. That's going to make more sense a little later on. I'm going to get to that in the second part. Now, let's talk about Henry David Thoreau, the transcendentalist philosopher who famously retreated to a cabin near Walden Pond. Thoreau realized that living a life of materialism was not what he wanted. He chose to simplify his life, live in nature, and prioritize his own sense of fulfillment. You don't have to go live out in a cabin in the woods to find your own sense of fulfillment, but finding that fulfillment is key to stop doing the shit you hate. These three examples, Oscar Wilde, defying convention, Vincent Van Gogh, and doing what you love for the sake of doing, and Henry David Thoreau, prioritizing your own sense of fulfillment, collectively, they serve as an aggregate example of how to live the rest of your life. From this point forward, a life you love and without the stuff you don't really want to do. Okay, so on a practical level, how do we accomplish this? Well, let's kick this off by addressing the elephant in the room, and that's the daily grind. Look, we all have responsibilities and obligations, of course. I'm not suggesting you shirk those, but are you trapped in a cycle of doing things that you absolutely despise? Are you spending most of your days feeling drained and unfulfilled? It's time to take a step back and evaluate where you're investing your time and energy. Continuing to do things you hate has a significant cost, both mentally and physically. It'll lead to burnout, stress, and a feeling of unfulfillment. Take it from me, if you will, it doesn't have to be that way. Identifying what you hate requires self-reflection. Start by asking yourself, what drains my energy? And what activities do I dread? This could be related to work, it might be relationships, or even just personal habits. And the next step is to acknowledge that change is possible and necessary for your well-being. You really got to hunker down and say, you know what, I'm not doing that shit anymore. And look, folks, confession time here. I am not holier than thou. One of the things I've hated in the past is overcommitting myself to too many projects. It winds up burning me out, stressing me out, and I I just don't have time for everything. So I don't jump on board every offer I get these days, and I, I do get a lot. It's about setting clear intentions and goals for what you want in life. Hear that one again. It's about setting clear intentions and goals for what you want in your life. That might mean doing something a little uncomfortable, like telling someone, hey, I appreciate the offer, but I'm just not taking on any new projects at the moment. I I can't do your podcast. I I can't write an article for your blog. I can't watch your kids or your dog this weekend while you're out of town. Whatever it is for you in your life, it might be uncomfortable to say no to those things that you actually hate to do, but keep in mind the intentions and goals that you have for your life. The power of choice is your greatest asset. You have the ability to shape your life and create a reality that aligns with your desires and values. And it starts with the courage to stop doing stuff you hate and start doing more of what you love. That's part one, the daily grind stuff. Now, part two is equally important to ponder and act upon. It has to do with figuring out what you actually love and not the idea of what you think you love. What do I mean by that? Well, here's an example. I I used to really want to learn how to play the guitar. I took a few lessons. I tried other methods like tablature. If you don't know what that is, guitar tablature is a method of notating music in a way that Beginning guitarists can learn songs quickly and easily. It's essentially just showing you where to put your fingers. So in other words, it's kind of a loophole around learning how to actually read actual sheet music. So I did all that stuff. And believe it or not, I actually got a Zen lesson out of, out of trying it. Because there were so many factors I, that I couldn't control. 
from the guitar I was using. I, I wanted an acoustic guitar, but I had I was learning on an electric guitar. That's neither here nor there, but I wasn't ever even sure if it was tuned right or not to the tablature music I had. It was in a book. I just had to play what was there instead of learning to play songs I really wanted. All, all I could really control was my reaction to these conditions that weren't perfect, that I didn't, I didn't particularly like. And that's like life itself. It's never perfect. It's never exactly the right conditions. You don't control the wind when you want to go fly a kite. I'm sure, maybe some days it's perfect, but a lot of times it won't be. All you can do is control what you're going to do with the amount of wind that you're given that day, or you go do something else. If you're open to it, this can compel you into a Zen mindset. And that's this. All you can do is show up today and do your best. All you can do is just show up today and do your best. And if that's good enough, terrific. And if it's not, eh, then it's not. But the thing is, I discovered, I like the idea of being a guitar player more than I did actually playing the guitar. I never really enjoyed it. Even when I hit the notes, the tabs correctly, and I produced what sounded like a familiar song, I didn't actually reap any beneficial joy from the playing itself. I just wanted to be a guitar player, probably to impress girls. <laughs> I think that happens to a lot of us. We want the identity of being something without having to actually do the work to be the thing. Because whenever you do something, there's always a bunch of unforeseen crap involved, right? Like if you want to be a skateboarder, you got to crash a lot. <laughs> If you want to learn ice skating because it looks like so much fun, you have to fall on your ass a bunch or cling to the rail on the side and just inch your way just once around the rink. Oh, it looks cool when people can do it. You watch a movie and see a couple on a date in New York City at that out outdoor ice skating rink at Rockefeller Plaza. It looks so romantic and fun and perfect. But when you actually go out and do it, it's really hard. <laughs> There's a vast difference between actually enjoying something and simply enjoying the idea of something. So why do we do that? When we want things, we think it's going to fix something, fulfill a need in some way. I look back and I basically felt like, oh man, if I could ice skate and play the guitar and I don't know, juggle... <laughs> Then I'd be sexy and cool. You know, because jugglers have such a reputation for being sexy and cool. I suppose I thought that I was lacking something in the cool, cool department. And that learning these things... I can't ice skate, by the way, just for the record. But by learning how to play the guitar or juggle... Or be an amazing photographer, for instance. I thought there was something missing that being able to do these things would complete me somehow. But that's not the same thing as actually enjoying doing something. This is the point, and it's critical. That's not the same thing as actually enjoying doing something. People think they want to be a writer or a painter. Well, why don't you? In reality, I think a lot of cases, people actually don't enjoy writing or painting. It takes patience, attention to detail. They like the idea of being a writer or a painter or hell, even a podcaster. <laughs> but the majority of podcasts don't make it past somewhere around the sixth or eighth episode, depending on which statistics you look at, because people find out there's a lot more to it than hit and record and just blabbing on about something. Wanting the identity of something, but not wanting the thing itself is a hard thing to admit. It was hard for me to finally admit you know, I don't actually enjoy playing the guitar. It sucks, in fact. It's not fun. Not for me. But that's just me. Some people love it right away and can't stop playing. Some writers can't stop writing. And don't give me this, well, you just didn't stick with it long enough. I sure did. And look, I like studying Japanese. You think that was easy when starting out? But I loved it right away. Even when I was a beginner. 
But a lot of people torture themselves doing something they hate over and over and over again, and it's because they've adopted the identity of it. I became a lawyer because I thought that's what I should do. I was told early on, Mark, you should be a doctor or a lawyer. Well, I don't like blood and guts, so law school it had to be. But I hated my job, most of it. And for a long time, I was afraid to let it go. Because when, when you let go of stuff like that, it's scary. Because you go back to a place where you don't know who you are in this life. It takes a bit of courage to do it. Like the courage to live with less money or the courage to not be approved by your family. But the real courage is the courage to be willing to not know who you are. Hear that one again. Real courage is the courage to be willing to not know who you are, to be willing to not know what the hell you want to do. So here's your five minutes in. What is it in your life that you're doing, not because you love doing it, but because you love the type of person it makes you or the type of person you appear to be to others? If you can spot those things in your life, Those are the things that are often causing you anxiety or misery or dysfunction. Stop that. (laughs) I'm not saying you shouldn't take the time to learn something like playing the guitar, ice skating, photography, juggling, crocheting baby blankets. Look, I learned Japanese and I still do it these days because it's kind of exciting for me every time I learn something new and I'm able to practice it. It's not a chore, it's a pleasure. It's part of my journey. And I'm also not saying don't do nice things for people like look after their kids or dog when they go out of town. You should do things like that because you take joy in helping others. But when you get overextended doing shit you don't want to do, well, that brings you stress and unhappiness to you and probably your loved ones as well. The important lesson here is this. Life is all about doing something for the thing itself. Not wanting to be something or look a certain way because it looks cool. But the joy of doing the thing that you truly enjoy. The more you let go of the things you don't actually want to do, the happier you become. And realizing that is a relief. You know what? I don't have to be an awesome guitar player. I can be a nerdy guy who studies Japanese in his spare time. I don't have to show up for that Zoom meeting or LinkedIn Live presentation if I'm not getting fulfillment from it. There's a liberation and comfort that comes with letting go of those things that aren't really you. And believe it or not, that is a very Zen thing to do. If you're into that sort of thing, and you don't have to be. (laughs) All right, that's all, folks. Stop doing the shit you don't really want to do. Both the day-to-day grind stuff the adhering to convention stuff and the stuff that you're doing just because you like the idea of it, but not really the thing itself. Just focus on the things that you truly find joy in. Start embracing the life you love. Continue to be kind, of course. Share love and concern for others. Always do that. But look to the lives of people like Oscar Wilde, Vincent Van Gogh, and Henry David Thoreau. Live your morals, live your passions, and prioritize your own sense of fulfillment. Okay, with that said, one of my great passions is this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider a small donation. That's what keeps the show going. You can do that at zensandwich.com. Two different ways, both of them work. Or if you're interested in sponsoring this show, I'd be happy to promote your interest so long as they fall in line with the premise of what I do here, contact me at zensamich at gmail.com to discuss sponsorship possibilities. That's all, folks. Stop doing the shit you hate. Thanks for listening. And most of all, breathe. Don't forget to breathe.